Hey, yo, Eric, what's going on? Oh, what's up, man? Uh, what are you working on right now? Uh, M4 splitter development. Nice, nice. So uh, when's, when's this coming out? I have no idea, Alex. Yeah, no worries. No worries. <laughs> All right, so there's been a lot of discrepancy about uh, vortex generators and just how they work, how, they're, how they should be applied properly. Can you like tell us about them and what they are exactly? Yeah, I'll do my best. In our specific case, vortex generators are little pieces that we put on typically the roof that create vortexes. And these vortexes basically energize that boundary layer. So as airflow is flowing over a car or an object, Sometimes, depending on the shape of the object, flow becomes detached. At times, you could want that detached flow. At other times, you may want attached flow. And by use of vortex generators, you can potentially increase that attached flow in that localized area. And we ensure that it actually does something by running CFD. We do this every day. Part of our development process and if we don't create vortex generators for the specific chassis it's likely we've tried it it doesn't benefit or like the supra and the gr86 the, the flows is already attached to the rear window glass and you don't need a vortex generator um, so what these ultimately will do is improve efficiency on the vehicle we've seen this happen multiple times over the past few months as matt's been running cfd on the m2 um, so we actually produced more downforce and we we did produce slightly more drag, but if we're keeping downforce constant, we can actually reduce drag. So basically the car becomes more efficient aerodynamically by use of vortex generators. Obviously vortex generators aren't used in just motorsports. They're used in aerospace as well. Maybe you've looked outside the window in an airplane and you've seen little tiny pieces on the wing. Those are vortex generators and that improves attached flow. Uh, Matt actually showed me a video as we were kind of discussing what to talk about in this video. And uh, I hope that Alex can like steal it from YouTube. Is that possible? I don't know. Yeah, I think I can, I can steal some stuff. Oh, yeah. yes. All right, throw that video up. Uh, it's freaking wild. It's like a carbon cub that's taken off in like seven feet. Anyways, we assume that like vortex generators allow flow to stay attached at a lower mile per hour and Air, aerospace uh, aftermarket, which I learned is a thing apparently, just kind of scares the hell out of me. And those guys might actually be using vortex generators on the wing, the airfoils to, uh, to do short takeoffs and landings. How we go about developing or, or adding vortex generators to chassis is when we're doing analysis, we can obviously see if flow is detached. Sometimes that flow detachment isn't really a bad thing and it's not really impacting rear wing performance. But for us, some of the chassis, Mustang, CTR, M2, that flow detachment on the rear glass or the rear hatch is actually detrimental to the rear wing. So when that's happening, you have to run a little bit higher angle of attack, which then produces more drag to, to make the same amount of downforce for the aero balance that you want. And instead, if you add some vortex generators, we can actually reduce the angle of attack, reduce the drag that the wing's producing, and make more, uh, make a car more efficient. So uh, we just did the FK8 CTR and same angle of attack, the rear wing made 25 pounds more downforce and two pounds more drag. So we can actually take that rear wing, reduce the angle of attack by a few degrees, reduce the drag by about 10 pounds, and you actually have the same aero balance, the same downforce with 10 pounds less drag. Alternatively, you can make more downforce at basically the same drag. So that's like a six to one efficiency increase by just sticking some guys on. That's pretty cool in my opinion. But again, it's because we did the CFD analysis, we ensured that it fits in the right spot and it does what it's supposed to do. All right guys, hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you learned a little bit of something about our products, our development cycle and vortex generators in general. We're gonna try and do these weekly engineering talks with Alex behind the camera. Until next time.